Many more, perhaps, were killed and several civilians as well. Police stations were burnt down. Public buses were also torched. It didn't spring from nowhere. And we'll explore the source of the anger and the violence in a moment with President Julius Madabio. But I asked him first what the situation was like at the moment. Well, first, I would definitely want to express my condolences to the families of those who have died in this unfortunate incident. It is calm and quiet now. It's been like this since yesterday evening. Uh, The security forces are fully deployed to make sure that there is no further deterioration in the situation. Uh, There are arrangements in place now to make sure that we improve on that situation. It is calm and quiet as I speak. What are they saying, the security experts and the ministers in charge of the situation, about the underlying and overt causes of the violence? Well, it could be political. And I think that is the thought at the moment. Um, They have been putting pressure to come out and uh, protest. Of course, uh, what happened yesterday was definitely not a protest. Um, It was uh, terrorism at the highest. We have um, a few Sierra Leoneans who live in the diaspora who have threatened to unleash terror on Sierra Leone on on several occasions. They will incite unemployed youths on this part in the country. And uh, on several occasions, we've had these uh, episodic eruptions of violence. In the other time, it was in Lonsa, another town. And another time, it was in Makeni, Tombo. And we've lost lives in most of these instances. You say unemployed youth, which actually is an indication, isn't it, that people actually do have genuine reasons for anger, for for feeling that they're not being heard and that their lives are becoming more and more difficult. So pointing to agitators seems to be denying that reality of Sierra Leonean youth and Sierra Leonean people in general. Definitely. There's hardship. We have unemployment. Uh, but most of the youth are unemployed. We do uh, sympathize with their situation. And as a government, we have done quite a lot to address that situation. The free quality education, which involves technical education at all district levels, is all meant to empower them to be able to employ themselves or to be to make them employable. Uh, we are doing quite a lot to empower them in that direction. We've made education, access to education free so that everybody is empowered. And uh, it's also about inclusivity, making sure that every Sierra Leonean, any a child born in Sierra Leone today can have access to education. So that is going on at the moment. These are very expensive undertakings at a point when we know that the global economy is going through difficulties. But we have made that effort just to make sure that we equip our young people, place them in a position where they'll be able to gain uh, employment. But that is a, a very long-term strategic vision. The The education of young people is a long-term strategic vision to turn things around. But right now, there's a massive cost of living crisis. And I grant you, of course, that's global in scope. But the joblessness, the youth unemployment, the overhang of COVID, all those are issues that confront people right now. They are hungry right now. What is your solution to that? They want government to solve those problems. But definitely these are genuine concerns and that is the responsibility of government. What we have done is uh, since the onset of uh, COVID itself was to make sure that we we try to cushion the effect of um, these trends on the people of Sierra Leone. We have waived virtually every tax on the essential commodities, making sure that they have been available all throughout, even with the uh, with the price of fuel. Uh, we have adjusted only when it is necessary, and uh, we have gone up when the prices on the world market have gone up, and we have immediately reduced those prices in the past two weeks twice, just to make sure that we reduce the impact on people. So we have done quite a lot to make sure that we cushion the effect of what is happening around the world. We are not using that as an excuse. Even with COVID, 
what we did was we custom made our own interventions to the extent that we are completely different from what was happening around the world. We never declared two or three weeks uh, disruptions at all. What we did were we had two periods during which we had to intervene and uh, uh, we made sure that there were only two day interventions during that COVID time just to make sure that we don't keep people indoor. During that time, we provided food uh, for a lot of people, the disabled, and we provided also cash transfers to, to cushion the effect. So quite a lot of activities have been taking place from the side of government to just cushion the effect. And there's just so much government can do, taking into consideration the poor performance of revenue under the circumstances too. You've, you've outlined several measures there that your government has taken. It seems, though, that there is still grounds for people to feel that government can do more. Can you do more? Under the circumstances, it's extremely difficult because revenue itself is not performing. As you know, we have supply chain disruptions which have had an impact on the cost of uh, virtually everything. And uh, because of all of these, and because we have taken away, given off all these waivers, the, the margins, fiscal margin, is very, 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 very tight. And remember our commitment to this huge and ambitious but necessary project to provide education for every child in this country. That is a huge undertaking that is taking a large amount of money every month to make sure that we are providing school fees, we are providing textbooks, we are providing teaching and learning materials, we have provided transportation in most of the cities, we are providing uh, feeding for other areas. And um, what we also have done is to uh, do quite a lot in the area of agriculture because we are looking at sustainable solutions, not just um, a quick fix uh, solutions. Uh, we are looking at um, sustainable solutions to our problems today. So there is a shift in policy as far as agriculture is concerned so that we'll be able to produce our own, uh, most of the essential food products that we need within the country. So why do you think, though, that um, people still come out in protest and in the the numbers that they did yesterday with the kind of force that they did? Are you communicating your intentions, your 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 your, your programs, your your strategic vision to the country so that they don't fall prey to what you were calling earlier agitators? We definitely try to do that all the time. But of course, there is politics underneath all of what is happening. And uh, you can't take that away. And uh, when you, you have this sort of ecosystem that has been created, um, the, we lash onto that. Of course, it's very easy to say the, the cost of things have gone up. Yes, that is true. Um, but have we done anything about it? Yes, we have indeed done a lot of things to ameliorate the, the situation. Is it enough? It's never enough because we have gone as far as we can go and uh, we are also constrained. One of your ministers, the youth minister, was on CNN earlier today and he was laying the blame squarely on the opposition APC as the real cause of the protests, the ones pulling the strings. Do you support that view? I have said earlier that um, that, that, that there is a political undertone to what is happening. It was not a protest, as you can see. Uh, Five people were killed, hacked to death in in, in the crudest of ways. But the the opposition party, the APC, has said that they have had nothing to do with this. Yes, uh, that, that is what they would normally say. But all of, almost all of those involved are from the, the party. Now, in the CN- CNN interview, the youth minister was asked where you, Mr. President, were. And his reply was that you were missing in action, MIA. You were abroad in the UK when these protests erupted. Now, many in Sierra Leone say that in spite of the hardships that they are experiencing, you keep going on expensive foreign visits and they say there's very little to show for these trips. Would you consider curbing these trips in solidarity with the people that are experiencing hardship in your country? As head of state, there are essential trips to make. Whatever happens, I'm getting ready to co-chair at the United Nations General Assembly with the United Nations Secretary General. I was at UNESCO just a little over a month ago 
these are es essential services. I was not keeping too well and I had to uh, do medical checks. And that was why I was in London. So to characterize it as uh, expensive foreign um, trips, I think it's wrong. And that's President Julius Madabio of Sierra Leone. He was talking to me just about an hour ago.